boxes in the rural area, so it is probably a good idea to have a box. Yeah. Well, especially now at Christmas, when there's packages and stuff, and Christmas packages and that, people. It's hard to keep a mailbox at my place. Yeah. <laughs> Too much traffic. It's hard to keep a mailbox with a cover on it. Yeah. At my place. The cover seems to walk off routinely. Get all your beans and bottle caps, Jerry, or your corn. You didn't have any corn. Did you? No, we didn't have any corn. Pretty swampy up there right now. It sure is. A little bit better we get that now. Freeze is hard enough, in my Yes. Yes. It's about 10 degrees, probably no cap. to approve the minutes from November 30th, 2018. Second. There's no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. auditing firm that sent in the proposal? Yes. That's the proposal. That's the question and the rates. And that's the yeah, rate. but they, it, didn't, it doesn't say how many estimated hours. It just says fees per level of employee per hour. that no one has magical predicting abilities, but like Eric Odding, when we asked him to engage with us, he gave us at least a, a dollar figure, and he said, Depend, you know, it's this much per hour, and I'm thinking it'll take so many hours, and this is the total. And I think, you know, we just need to solicit for some bids. I think so, it's a little, I think you want to do that next year, that's fine, but we're off, of course, the first of the year to be soliciting bids. I'm sure the there are people that want business any time of the year. You told me that last year, too, because I said about wanting to bid out the audit the auditing firm because you guys have been using the one, same one for a very, very long time. We can at least get bids on hourly rates and compare hourly rates if they're not going to give us an estimated total. I move to solicit bids to employ the auditing firm and auditing firm, excuse me. for the 2018 audit. I have a motion to solicit bids for auditing firm to have a second. Motion dies for auditing firm. I would move to employ Lindbergh, Global, Pierce, Ferris, Chartered, perform the auditing work for Lincoln County for 2019. There. Is there any further discussion? 
Yes, the, the two discussion points that I would like in the minutes are, one, why are we not soliciting bids for this when it's a large cost to the county and it's a yearly cost? And number two, I'm waiting for Dawn to make sure she got all that. Did you catch that, Dawn? Okay. And number two is, why is the county continuing to employ the same auditor year after year without soliciting bids? What, what is the reason? Those are my two points of discussion on that motion. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. I'd like the minutes to reflect that there was no response to my questions. I think it's been discussed several times. I don't think the answer is You said the same thing last year that you just said this year, which is, oh, we can do that next year because we're too late. Did think of it earlier in the year, I guess. What kind of response is that? What kind of question is that? Same question you asked. I don't know how many times it's been discussed. I haven't changed my position on it. So. I would only say that in my discussions with other commissioners and my involvement in other entities, when audit firms had to uh, disband it and bids were sought out, that uh, it was difficult to find a reliable audit firm to do what uh, you want them to do and do what they're expected to do. Uh, I think several of the county commissioners that I'm Pointed with went through this process a few years ago and very few of them were satisfied with the results of their search that they have really wished they would have continued with their uh, auditing firm that they were familiar with and the auditing firm was familiar with the activities of that county so I would not at this time until I see a problem with our audit firm um, defer to seek another audit so what I'm hearing you say is that familiarity and comfortability with an auditing firm and this governmental entity is the priority, not cost or potential even support for economic capitalism. And My experience with that, there is very little difference in the prices of audits and oftentimes companies will bid low and to get the business, but it is a bad result of that. And so I am I'm very hesitant to, to change audit firms that I am comfortable with and that has served this county well. Uh, I'm interested. You said your experience, yet every time I've asked, as Mr. Finch pointed out that I've asked several times, you say that you've never tried another firm. So how do you know what that, ex how are you saying you have that experience when I believe I just explained to you that I have been involved with other county commissioners that have gone through this process and they have not been very satisfied with their results. How many commissioners are that and what counties are they from? Because I just... Dickinson, Morris, Republic, I believe was with the other one. Maybe Washington, I don't remember. Juvenile Detention Center also went through it. Soliciting audit firms and the one that uh, after we chose it, we found that there was severe problems with that firm, but we were able to work through those. Well, I just, you know, I find it interesting we exempt ourselves from standard accounting principles of GAAP so that we can just claim on a cash basis for the audit, which is, I mean, you're not asking for anything over the moon there. And 
other than that, it's basically a rerun. I mean, we went through everything with the auditor as far as setting up the line items with the budget. We never got a detailed analysis of anything, and he actually just caught a few things that were wrong for several years. So what you're saying is he's been here for several years, you're not comfortable changing until we find something wrong, but yet this year, for example, he told us to close the account that we had an open extra checking account with the Register of Deeds office, and that shouldn't be set up that way, and he's had several years to catch that, and we just found that out this year. So your comfortability and familiarity doesn't necessarily resound with someone who's efficient and staying on top of those types of things, yet repeatedly gets hired and contracted out without a total amount given, no estimated hours, and no competitive bids. Makes me very sad. You know what we pay them, don't Correspondence. This is an invoice from Waddles Heating and Cooling out of Salina for Lincoln Park Manor, $1,077.26. I don't know what this means. Agree, T P TAC, P T A C. It's heating and cooling unit. Well, that's the company it does heating and cooling. I don't know what a, what that particularly means. P TAC is a heating wall unit in the assisted living part of the. They use P TACs. That's a new unit. They're a combination heating and cooling unit. So that's ordering a new one? Yes. I'm not sure. There may be some more in the facility, but I know the ones in the assisted living are PTFs. Board of County Commissioners, on October 30th, 2018, our office sent a letter to you regarding the termination of a gravel agreement Lincoln County previously had with the Block Family Venture, um, owners of the described real estate. To date, I have not received a reply, and this was on November 16th. Did we just open this now? Yeah. I think they're about done out there. I know we wrote them a check. We paid them Friday sum of money for the remainder of the material that was in the pit. So. Did their last letter ask for us to confirm that, or did it just said to close it, right? So we, so Michael has been out there? Yeah. Yeah, they, um, I think they've got everything hauled out. There's still a dozer sitting there, I think. But. I have the last letter. I think it was just a notification that it was terminated and that there should be closure, and then I know that we notified the department head, and he said they had already worked on it some, right? We're, they were in the table. So we need to make sure to send them a letter that we're done, if we're done. Yeah, I'll just give it to Michael and have him. I know there's still a dozer or something there. This is to advise you, and then should you have any questions, please contact our office. So I guess we need to ask him to make sure he sends them a letter when they're done, and ask them when they'll be done. I don't know what that is. To dress the girl so let you know. These are seminars. These are also good, se uh, decent seminars that are not necessarily county government related, but. Marilyn, have heard anything from Marilyn? I have not. I think what she's wanting to know is whether they could use support out for. Um, Christmas Day activities that I just got to win. 
Well, David, let's go ahead and take care of you. She can, she can take your slot. All right, y'all, this morning. Thank you, Dad. Yes, sir. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Again, I find it easy that, that when I come before you guys, that I have a prepared statement um, and, and make copies for you. And then if you have any questions, you can ask me um, when I get done. And again, I'll just read from my statement. On October 8th, we had a workshop with law enforcement officers coming over and speaking in the morning and then in the afternoon, LaDonna Reiner, along with her staff and Katie Gardner from Lincoln County Hospital and myself completed the Stop the Bleed training in the afternoon with the Highway Department, the courthouse staff attending the training. Since, the, since that time, 33 stop, kit, stop the Bleed kits were acquired from for the um, Lincoln County, Lincoln Emergency Planning Committee through the County Attorney's Diversion Agreement Fund. Twenty of those kits were dispersed to the Highway Department, ten went to the Courthouse, one to the Health Department, one to the Transfer Station, and one in my possession. On October, on October 24th, there was a North Central Kima tabletop exercise in Ottawa County called County Fair Chaos. On October 27th, the LEPC had the zombie event in Vesper with 47 registered adults and 43 registered children in attendance. There were bicycles given away and adult items also given away. The bicycles were given by the Bank of Tescott, Bennington State Bank, and the Citizen State Bank. On October 29th and 30th, I attended the G290 Public Information Officer class. And October 31st, I attended the G291 Joint Information System class in Salina. On November 9th, USD 299 Silva Lucas Unified Staff and Administration were trained in Stop the Bleed program. This, again, was conducted by LaDonna Reiner, her staff, Katie Gardner from the hospital, and myself. On November 16th, I attended the Healthcare Coalition meeting in Salina as I am an appointed representative from the North Central Kima region. There is a water filtration system that is housed at Salina Regional for the North Central region. We had just-in-time training on the unit on how to set it up and how to make it operate. The system with filtered pond water, excuse me, the system will filter pond water up to 99.9% .9 pure at a rate of 60 gallons per minute. North Central Healthcare Coalition had purchased Stop the Bleed kits and these were distributed and I currently have them in my office. And each county from the HCC got eight kits. And again, everybody within the county, I shouldn't say everybody, but all the departments except for the Sheriff's Office had previously received the kits. Um, November 19th through the 21st, I moved my office and I'm now officially in the basement. I turned my keys into Dawn on the 26th. I've had some minor con connectivity problems and I've had calls with Next Tech IT support to this date. I think the problem has been resolved. November 27th, I attended the North Central Homeland Security Council meeting in Beloit. FY15 funding is closed. FY16 funding paid for all hazards incident management team members um, for reimbursement to go to the national conference at Hilton Head, South Carolina. I'm a member of that team, but I, I didn't find it pertinent that I attend that conference, so I, I did not apply before you folks. FY17 funding for the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center project purchased another 340 Stop the Bleed kits for law enforcement officers. FY16, there will be funding left over on the generator slash light tower project, and this will go toward portable message boards two counties that agree that they would like to utilize them. The message board funding will carry over into FY18 also. There was a presentation from Gail Bartley, the emergency manager, and Sheriff Don Jacobs from Jewell County, and discussion was had about the active shooter event in August in Jewell County. There was discussion about future training opportunities and continuity planning that needs to occur at our lo local jurisdictions to assist with the hardening of dispatch centers. Swap and Saha, with KDAM gave a presentation about the Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Grant program and advised that in it is an 80-20 grant, the, the grant cycle will be coming out in December. In the past, the grant has been a one-year cycle, but the grant coming out in 2020 will be a three-year grant. The state EOC was activated for that blizzard on Sunday, November 25th, um, but Lincoln County dispatch, or, or there were no accidents that were paged out on I-70, um, I know power was out in the Beverly and Westfall area for a while, but I never received any calls from the sheriff's office. 
that, that anybody was needing assistance. Saturday, March 23rd, Lincoln County is hosting a full-scale exercise through a hazardous material emergency preparedness grant. We have had two planning meetings, with the first one being October 23rd and the second one being November 26th. With the exercise, there will be a hazmat identified chemical being towed that will have an accident with the school bus and will compromise the passengers on the bus. The hospital, nursing home, law enforcement, and USD 299 will be testing some core capabilities. And with this, there will be local response from fire, EMS, regional hazmat team from Salina, the CERT team, community emergency response team, law enforcement, and possibly Salina Mounted Patrol. With the transportation of the patients on scene after decontamination, they will be transported to LCH. With this, I have spoken to the emergency manager from Ellsworth and Russell County, Keith Hover, and asked him if, if we could have a unit and a crew from each of the county respond to our training event that day. The, em the emergency manager advised me that he had spoken to the emergency EMS directors from each county and they had advised that they would send an ambulance and a crew over for the training. I am laying the groundwork for this exercise to happen as I am ensuring that I will have the resources available to plan and then exercise. There's an MGT 314 course offered in College Station, Texas. I attached that information to the back of your paperwork, or it's the, the section after my draft. Um, that that is offered in College Station, Texas that trains individuals in Incident Management Structure, ICS. The course is a three and a half day course, 28 hours, and is funded by the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. I have enclosed training information for you to look at. I would request that you allow department heads that have the training uh, up to the G300 course level to be available to attend this training as county employees would have the opportunity to receive this invaluable training experience um, that is directly transferability onto the incident management team, incident command, post staff, or emergency operations center in preparation for an actual large-scale incident. Participants will learn by examining the effects of their decisions while working in an incident command post setting using a national, notional jurisdiction. Participant eligibility includes emergency responders, supervisors, managers from the disciplines or services, law enforcement, emergency medical services, emergency management, fire service, hazardous material, public works, government administrative, public safety communication, health care, public health, and other county, state, and federal agency personnel who may respond in support of a local jurisdiction. Topics that are trained down there, decision making, principles of incident management and unified command, overview of the staff command system, incident command system, organizing and staffing for unified command, resource management and incident management strategies, incident action plan development, practical application of the incident response planning process, ICS documentation overview, training simulations tools overview, and the CBRNE and all hazards computer driven tabletop exercises. This course is normally three and a half days, 28 hours, beginning on a Tuesday and concluding at noon on Friday. This training is funded by DHS, FEMA, National Training and Educational Division. NERRTC arranges and provides all travel, lodging, and per diem for participants. Upon confirm com confirmation of course registration, NERRTC will provide information for travel and participants may require. I would request that you allow me to pursue this training for department heads of the agencies in Lincoln County, represented by the Treasurer's Office, Leanne Bishop, as Finance Officer, myself as the Logistics Officer, Public Works would be Michael O'Hare, and, and that would be reference the Operations position, County Clerk's Office, Don Harlow for the Planning Section, Steve Granzow, and again, he's not a county employee, as a Public Information Officer, um, Tammy Kurth as a Liaison Officer, LaDonna Reiner as a Safety Officer, Dustin Florence from Law Enforcement. Resolution 2005-14, designation of the National Incident Management System, NIMS, as the Incident Management System is to be used for planning, responding, recovery, and mitigating from both natural and man-made disasters within Lincoln County was adopted July 5th of 2005. This training opportunity is based on the resolution that would give all the departments and people listed above to learn practice and convey in a no-fault controlled environment that would benefit the infrastructure of Lincoln County. And, and then again, the, the next section is, is the resolution that I just quoted. 
Then the third section of that is the MGT314 class. And then the next to the last page is the training dates that they have available through 2019. And that's from January 14th through the 18th through December 2nd through the 6th of 2019. Again, elected public officials are, are invited to come to this training also. Um, one of the mandated requirements, though, is that you must have the G300 level training. Um, the, two per, the two current positions that do not, that I am aware of, are Under Sheriff Florence and Leanne Bishop, the treasurer, and I've sent both them information as to upcoming training by KDEM that will be put on in Hutchison. Um, January 8th and 9th. So I'm trying to accommodate them and to get that training again if we're allowed to do this. This time, yes. At this time, and again, funded by Department of Homeland Security, yes, correct. Have you visited with others that are interested in doing it? Um, I spoke to law enforcement, spoke to the hospital, spoke to Mr. Granzow, spoke to Public Works, spoke to the Health Department. Um, have spoken a little bit to fire chiefs as ultimately they would be incident command if, if there was a grass fire, a big fire like over at the lake, they'd be, they'd be IC for that event. Um, and, and there's interest within the fire chiefs, and I know all the chiefs or assistant chiefs have had the ICS 300 and 400 class when Rodney used to be here. Now, I had not had the opportunity to speak to Donna, but at the last exercise that we did, she was one of the incident command staff as the logistics, I think is what your title was. Yes, but you did a good job that day. <laughs> right, right. You slept since then, I understand. And again, um, we're having our LAPC meeting the last Monday of January, and this was talked about at the last meeting. Um, uh, again, I could I could get more confirmation or get some better numbers. And again, trying to get a date solidified to where everybody could go, that might be the problem too. Or if, if I had to divide it up into two groups, that that would be beneficial also. And that would lay the groundwork to setting up incident command with knowledge of everybody. I'm not correct in they are uh, providing uh, compensation for people going down. Compensation. That Department of Homeland Security will, will pay for the airline tickets, the lodging, and then the per diem rate, similar to like when I went out to Colorado. But are we paying that as a work day, or do they have to use one of their some of their off time. What's that? I said, I think the question for our expense is then are we paying them as a work day or is, are they going to be required to use their own time? Well, I assume if they do it like they do when David goes, they're going to reimburse us for the wages. And it just says travel, wages. lodging, and per diem. 
But again, if, if they're going as a county representative, as a department head, wouldn't you knowingly pay them for a work day? I don't know. You didn't request that. I'm just wondering. I, you have quite a list there. What, like eight people? I right, right. Right. Down. Yes. I'm just wondering, in, from my view of training, which I believe in training, how much training are these people getting in their own departments that is, you know, for their own beneficial use on a daily basis versus attending something that's meant more for emergency management, EMS, that kind of, and then I'm sure the sheriff. But again, in the incident command structure, you're going to need a finance officer, which would be our county treasurer. Uh, again, in, in previous, previous documentation that I'd seen, Don's name came up as a logistics officer. Um, there's, there's other positions. Tammy Kroth came up as a liaison officer. No, no, and it's I'm, not not, just I'm not discrediting what you're saying as far as the structure. I'm just saying, how much money are we putting into current training for their current jobs that they actually use versus the hypothetical training for something that may or may not happen? That's all I'm saying. I'm, I want to compare how much money we're putting into their training, period, for their own purposes. For their, their own training as yeah. far as... as I'm, I'm not it's sure. I mean, I know Dawn has mentioned several times that it's hard for her to get to go to a training every year because of either time constraints or monetary constraints. Well, and that's and for and her own there, office. There's training for me also that, that I don't have the time constraints or, or the monetary things to go. You've gone to several trainings every year. Yes, I have. Yeah. But, uh, again, I'm trying to bring that information back to the county. Again, in, in the presentation the to the county, Last time I asked though, you about bringing the information back to the county, though, what you told me is that you're not authorized and and you don't have certification to, to present the information back. So I understand now you're trying to take people along with you. I get that. My question is, where are we at as a county as far as investing in the training that, you know, we all take in our own departments versus now intercombining training, cross-training, I'll call it. That's a more proper term. But with the NIMS compliancy, the, the resolution that was signed in 2015, Lincoln County is, is supposed to be NIMS compliant, which... Everybody, everybody, including the commissioners, should have a 100 and 700, but then that was opted out to covered by the 402, the elected official training, which is supposed to be offered next year at the KAC conference, is what I was told as a pre-conference event. So again, that 402 class would cancel out the 100 and the 700. I've asked you to do the 100 and 700, and I've yet to see a certificate. But yet I gave you your state credential that, that allows you to get into a scene in the event of an emergency. and and. Uh, again, you know, holding people accountable, how do you hold them accountable? Do I, do I have the jurisdictional availability or accessibility to, to, to cover other department heads and, and what they do or what they don't do? And again, I've asked, I've asked that, that the ICS 100 and 700, the online courses, be completed as a pre-employment position of responsibility after they do their drug test or their, their fitness test that they have to do now do that through that process, and then that person would not be taking up time sitting there with their with their department head when when they should be out learning whatever they got hired for. In and my personal position, I don't see it my job to personally go and physically interfere with any kind of scene like that. I'm sitting here looking at the finances. That's what I've been hired and elected to do. So I understand your concern that you want everybody knowledgeable and everyone aware that would be hypothetically involved in this scenario. I'm looking at the overall cost of what we've put into emergency management over the last, what, two decades versus what the output is, the cost versus the actual output. And I'm not devaluing its validity, but there is a certain time when you need to put constraints on the expenses. And that's why I'm saying this cross-training idea, it's not a bad idea. What I'm saying is, how much have we already focused on inter, in, internal training versus cross-training? I don't know that that makes sense to me financially, is what I'm saying. The cross-training is funded by Department of Homeland Security. Whether we go or not, those seats are taken. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to educate and have everybody on the same page. Again, you can send me to all the trainings you want or that I'm allowed to go to, and, and I can bring that information back. Do, do everybody, does, does everybody always well, let attend meetings? Let me give you an example. Let me give does, you an example. Does everybody you, always attend you meetings? Attempted to I'm set talking. Up. Can you give me a moment? I, I can attend all these meetings. Mm -hmm. I can bring the training back. But do, do all these department heads always come to these meetings? Quarterly fire chiefs, the LAPC? Probably last, not. And, and why not? They're appointed by the commissioners. Where's the accountability? 
There, there's people within the county that, that, that are appointed by you that do not participate. Why? And that's not my, I can't go, by God, you need to be here because the commissioner has appointed you. That's not my place. That's back on you. Well, I'm glad you're bringing that to the table. This is the first you've brought a complaint to the table. But what I'm explaining to you financially is that you have to, that's, that's where my perspective comes in. If you have people that don't want to participate, but that's their field of work and their duty, that needs to be discussed, and it hasn't been discussed. So that would be a legitimate concern that you have. I understand that. Financially, you're asking us to make a decision that I would just like to see the comparison there as to what kind of training we've done in internal departments. I mean, we had a lot of confusion earlier this year just in our own taxing system. You know, I think if we can't properly figure out the tax structure within our own courthouse, that, that would be a take priority over a hypothetical scenario, which we do respond to things regularly that are small. You're talking about, I mean, these people train for the, the, tr the World Trade Center. What did it say? There's different training capabilities. Yeah, Hurricane yes. Katrina. Yeah, so yes. I'm saying, but that's what they're for. I mean, that, it's, it's very, very large scale. I get it. Or the tornado that wipes out half the county. Or, or, or flooding. Flooding. Uh, again, there, there's there's different things that could happen. Yes, and again, we can we cannot be prepared. That's fine. I, I don't care. But uh, again, if if we have the opportunity to send these people in a no fault win win situation. But what you just said, they won't come to the regular meeting here. But now you're going to entice them by going somewhere else. I mean, that's basically what you're saying. You're providing them an opportunity to go get the training because you're you're putting it with a carrot. So I understand. But you also came to us for the first time with a complaint today while you're presenting that. Okay. So that should probably be explored, the complaint. Uh, I think probably the ones that are interested in going to it do respond to those things. Mm -hmm. I think the ones that don't won't be interested in going to the training. So right. I think I'd like to say I don't know how many are interested in going. So. Okay, and I can find that information out, and I can report back on that. That'd be fine. Anything else for me? No, I don't believe so. Thank you. sat there so uh -oh. it's just it's not any shorter but it feels awkward over there okay so Marilyn Helmer apparently called we gave Dee Dee the commissioner telephone line um, it just seemed like the easiest to have them swap over so apparently Marilyn did call you guys and it rings and we can't answer in like if she would get a commissioner phone she can send it to us but or call us and then there's the information about the audit so um, total paid budget audit. If I remember right, that firm in Hayes wanted twenty-five thousand dollars to do a full audit of the senior centers and the council on aging. So that kind of gives you a comparison cost-wise as to twenty-nine thousand to do all of our auditing work versus twenty-five thousand just to do a one-time audit on three very small entities. Well, maybe they didn't want to get involved. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said maybe they didn't want to get involved. It wasn't really, you know, an enticing scenario to make money. <laughs> um, what is this? What does this budget mean? That's when they prepare the budget. So it's a it's a long drawn out process, but not just meeting with you guys, but then they get all of the department heads budgets in. And then they do but you out. subtracted that amount. Well, I'm just pointing out that's the dollar amount for the budgets. To oh, to the budget. I'm sorry. You went left, yeah. right to left. I'm looking left to right. I okay. thought that they just sent us 
bills, I didn't realize they sent us a specific bill for budget. So I thought they would, they basically send us a bill three times per year, and I thought it was just for their So time. they're billing separately to do the budget. Yes. So they can do the audit and not do the budget, and that yes. would be the difference there. To, pre to prepare the budget is that for well, yes. 3390 And of course they use information out of the audit to help pre prepare the budget, so... Okay, so we're requested to open the courthouse February 16th for um, Lincoln County reenactment. I don't have any problem with you know, brings people to town. It's been going on for about 20 years, close to it. Um, I move to approve use of the county courthouse on February 16, 2019 for Lincoln County reenactment. Is there, isn't there a something days? Isn't it? What's that? Don't they call it Lincoln days or what? Yeah, they used to. Well, she wrote reenactment, so I'll just yeah. use that. It's been called reenactment. For Lincoln for County reenactment, okay. I'll second the motion. No further discussion. All is better to Aye. So who comes to take care of that? Don, do you do that? Uh, no, John. John you, he'll it. come. That's a, some training certificate that we'll give the highway department guys to pass out to their employees. Completed training certificates for K work, forklift training, and uh, defensive driving, I believe it was. You got something there for? Just information, no action item whatsoever. About last spring, Gary asked if I would find out more information on different agencies. Uh, it's taken a while, but we've got it. Got the information back, and I have packets for you. And I thought what would how it would go is I could pass it out. You guys could read it, and I'll be on the agenda next week. And then if you have questions for them, I'd be able to respond to them. The fun. second, the second item is. Uh, you know, in the hiring of a new area coordinator or whether there should even be an area coordinator has become an issue or a discussion of advertising and things. And we have, uh, <clears throat> back in September, I gave some information to the Council on Aging, which, I don't know, for whatever was questioned. And so they questioned, uh, I had them talk to a uh, Karen Mays, who is the Senior Opportunities and Community Services Supervisor. And she responded in a letter to the person who was writing, and he brought it to the board, which is public information now, so I have a copy of that letter that he received. It's in regards to the conflict of interest from the, for the site manager and for taking a position of the area coordinator. It also has that people can't, who can and who should be able to report at council meetings, and the conflict of interest defined by Manhattan. And I thought it was, if nothing else, great reading. <laughs> And if you have Thank questions from, yes, the friendship meals, just to let you know. And I'm representing the North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging uh, from, for Lincoln County. Um, so I attended the meetings, attended all the meetings, and the last one was on November 20th at Council Grove, Kansas. And so we discussed a little bit. I had a chance for about 15 minutes to meet with Karen and discussed a little bit, and she provided a letter that she sent um, for the information on that. And we have goals, which I'll discuss at the next um, uh, meeting, if that's okay to be on the agenda for the next time, and what that would, would mean for seniors. Uh, the first document is real important. It defines that <clears throat> the, sometimes we hear out and about that the 
senior or the friendship program or the friendship meals is a program provided by the Lincoln Senior Center. That's just not true. It stands separate. It's from Manhattan. It's paid full from Manhattan. Uh, there's, uh, a, and I believe that the mill levy money is to provide program funding <clears throat> for seniors. So it's not providing monies for the meal program. And I think at the last meeting, a council meeting, Rose, who's another representative, made clear that um, <clears throat> the friendship meals can be taken anywhere where there is a full kitchen and a 501c3. It doesn't have to be at a senior center. And that some things need to be uh, shaped up, I guess is a better word to say, of how things are flowing and how things are determined. Uh, even this morning I gave some information back to Al Joe, some rumors that are floating around. And the hope is, as you'll read in that first letter from Karen, that uh, communication is uh, an issue in Lincoln County when, and that it get taken, be considered anyway of uh, being a more structured way to present your um, information to the county. So, Breeze Reed. Well, I do, I, I would like to just reiterate sure. on some of that. The, the Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging, North Central Flint Hills Area. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can never they remember. I should just, just have the 18 yeah. board, but that's but that's separate. We set over them. Aging in the Flint Hills yeah. <laughs> should only really have any primary authority or jurisdiction over the friendship meals itself. That's right. Just because the senior center decided to facilitate that program does not mean that that they report to and or have any other responsibility outside of the meal program to that agency. I think that's, that's been one of the biggest right, that's been one of the biggest confusions because the board, the LCCA board of Lincoln County has continually thought that they were under the purview of that agency and they have a representative coming to the LCCA meetings. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm against attending the meetings, just saying when they come it's they're solicited for advice on our internal county's operations, which is not, I mean, that's not how it's And that is answered up. in the letter, too. Okay. She, has she, a, she, she And she I find that very interesting, because I had this conversation with Karen Mace several years ago, and she was not on this side of the fence. Well, I think well, the yes, turnover and I, there... I think that's why I'm here to mm -hmm. present that to Right, you, it's a new it's concept. Taken a yeah. lot of my um, lobbying, if you will, <laughs> of trying to present that. Um, I, my thing is to see all three entities or maybe if it even remains three entities, begin to work together for all seniors in the county and not for any, any separate entity. Uh, again, there's you do not have to hire, and there's no hurry process to hire an area coordinator. Some of those, uh, as you have seen in Sylvan, you had a wonderful turnout for the uh, um, Schick program, which was all provided by volunteers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're going to have another one because it was so well attended and they didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. There's one this week in Lincoln. Um, it's just getting the, inf the communication out that these things can and be And that there are other resources. We don't have to provide everything internally with our own tax dollars. That is correct. And that's yeah. the reason for explaining those other agencies and what they can provide mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had reiterated to the council, you know, before some of the internal problems started on the board there that are just recent. I mean, they've had issues with that board. but. I had brought back to this yeah, council we're still that, having some issues. <laughs> right, right. I had met with Karen's actual supervisor, and then she had put me in touch with the Salina office, and they do provide those things and yes. or help facilitate them through other areas to get wherever the final destination is. The problem is, is as you get older, and I can testify because I'm older, um, it's hard to give information over the phone. And a lot of time, when you can call it's a It's nice to have number, someone right it's, there. It's really good to be mm -hmm. eye contact, one on one person. Mm -hmm. But that training is provided, and we can. And mileage reimbursed for those and people we who have do it. Schick trainers in this county. Yes. And maybe that needs to be tapped in and looked at. And Well, that was always some... a justification used for, for having that job. Exactly. And especially having it full time. I understand. And, and it was nice. It was nice for the people. They got used to that, and they. But on the other hand, they maybe if they didn't provide, they weren't aware of all the other kind of agencies that can provide services, uh, which are free. I mean, the right. agency has that, and they train people. Well, to it's come already out and state do that. and federal funded, basically. Yes, it is. So and we don't need to triple fund it. The program is federally funded. You're not paying for it at all here. Look, uh, with local taxes, we're right. all paying for it. But yes. Well, in the long run, mm -hmm. one way or the other. But thank you for doing that because now that I'm old, <laughs> I appreciate it much more. 
Um, so that's trying to clarify, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, it's a lot of times I will hear, oh, but Lincoln provides a program of the pro uh, meals. And you just want to clarify that that's out of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And it can be in a, wherever there is a kitchen that can apply for it. And um, there can be other startup senior programs to request money for mill levy money. Well, see, we've it's been whoever can provide a senior program, which is different than an activity. Uh, you know, we're, it's not that you should probably be providing to play cards or whatever. Those are things that can come as activities. A program is really an educational, not necessarily a training, but something that will benefit all seniors in Lincoln County. I think what you're touching on, though, is some of what we've discussed prior. And we did ask, we did motion and approve to ask Jennifer O'Hare to provide an opinion yes, internally here. on what the mill levy is set up to do because we have an original um, charter resolution that is not found as far as mm -hmm. having the paperwork I on it. I think in 2008 uh, she was asked to uh, do to define how the uh, procedures, would, from what I read in minutes, I wasn't sitting here like mm -hmm. that, but from what I understand at that time the area coordinator asked the commissioners to provide direction on how to proceed with funding and uh, just policy. And I don't know whatever came of that. I can't follow through the minutes. I, as but I'm we, trying we now, don't have any actual paperwork attached to that mill levy. So it is at the full discretion of the board to distribute it to whichever entity they deem fit. And I think the debacle that's been happening at the LCCA for quite a few years deems them unfit at least temporarily until something changes and they have a new structure and they've provided some sort of legitimate, I mean they have enough money saved up that they can revamp themselves. All, all they don't need our money to, to restructure themselves. And you know I think that at one time you commissioners talked about freezing money and things like this until things got big and you know you may have put it. Um, well, I we will have, tell we you have this. Not, we haven't even distributed the last payment, right? I don't know. Well, we still we, we, we distributed we, half we of 24000 We did some directly to the senior centers. Right, but I mean, I'm saying, of what we withheld of 24000 something odd, yeah. I think we still have 12 left in yeah. this year's budget. We have not. We didn't give the last distribution except for the funds that we gave to the senior center directly. That's what I thought. And, and the charter, for whatever reason, and all the definitions is to provide senior programs. It does not say to provide to senior centers. Okay. So, but, you know, to, to get that issue, there, maybe there needs to be some refiguring of how oh, that I all think, comes down. I don't think there's any doubt there's going to be. And the question on there that may be confusing in that letter is uh, the <coughs> advertising that went for refilling an area coordinator position. And uh, from speaking from Manhattan, we prefer not to have happen what happened there. Right, is it, they, they, they're basically, who is it? this is Karen? Mm -hmm. She's basically saying that OCCA has speaking. not received a resignation from the former employee. They just yeah. not, that, they just stopped coming. That isn't a problem as much as they went ahead and advertised for things without knowing what the pay, what the hours. And so you're relieving one person, but not setting up what you want for another person. And that you, know, you usually don't advertise for a position without knowing how many hours, what the pay will be, what the duties will be, and. Yeah, they Again, didn't definitively, yeah. They did not do that, and that's, you know, there's some legal issues entwined in all of that. It's starting with a resignation, of course. So wherever that goes is somebody else's problem. I'm just reporting it as the middle person here. Um, so if you have questions, read, you know, investigate, research, and I'll try to answer the best questions I can next week on it. Okay. Uh, if that's all right with you guys. Fine. Thank you. All right. Thank Sorry you. it took so long. I, I wanted not to be the person just saying what somebody said. Yeah. No, it's good to see from Karen that she's And I didn't want it to say Cindy she's said either. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. And I enjoy doing that. It's wonderful to go to the other senior centers. And just as a, a little thing to add, most of the senior centers end up with, in the 18 county area, end up with 500 to $1,200 at the end of their year. And they count on fundraising. Not necessarily no other money, just to let you know. Anyway, next. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Good morning.
the Lincoln County Highway Department email. LCHighway at lincolncoks.org. Okay, thank you. I hope the bridge crew didn't have anything in the channel while they're still on the bridge. Not in the channel, but. It's uh, holding them up from driving piling right Oh, there it is. I've been out there today, but it was. It's coming high. down. It? Yeah, it's coming down, uh, thankfully. Uh, they did last week get the south abutment drove, and they were hoping to do the south set of piers starting today and then get moved around to the other side and start working that abutment and pier there also. Of course, they're going to be delayed a little bit on that, but I think I think the water will come down in the next few days here and allow for them to continue here. Um, we do have some of the guys out doing some damage assessments and doing some gravel recovery. We had uh, numerous places in the far northwest part of the county where it did go over the road with this last rain. Uh, we have a crew out trying to get some snow fence put up. It's, uh, I think, froze just enough that we're going to be able to get some of it up. I think there's going to be a few places that we might not be able to get it up at all this year, but we'll try to get it done in as many places as we can. I think we're supposed to have some cold nights this week. So. Yeah, tonight and into tomorrow, but by noon the rest of the week, I think it's supposed to get up above freezing and Things will start falling out pretty quick again, I think. Uh, I do have a preliminary gravel report for what we've hauled this year. Um, it looks like on our list we still have two inactive pits. Um, the block gravel pit, we are in the process of getting that closed. Do you know when that will be done? What's that? The block pit. How long do you think it's going to take to finish it? Uh, as far as the work that we have to do in it, as soon as it dries out enough, we got a area, I don't know, three times the size of this room that needs smoothed out, and that's about it. Okay. We got the, a letter from Yeah, the attorney. Yeah, you guys said, can show that to me, and I've got No, there's one a second one. Oh, we got a new one. Second. They're just saying they didn't receive a response, but they didn't honestly they didn't ask, ask for, for Here's This is the new one. That's the first one. That's the, This is the most recent. Okay. Now they're asking for a response, so I thought if you're going to be finished relatively shortly, we could wait until we're done and send them and say we're done. I think a telephone call is appropriate. Immediately today. The attorney. To the attorney. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Just call them and tell them that we're working on it. Sure. Work that, that is, that's... Yes. Yeah. I had met with some of the family members last week on site, and we discussed some oh. stuff there, so... Well, okay. this was December... Er, November 16th, so that's good if you talk to them. Since yeah, that would have been prior to you meeting with them. So yeah. That may. But I agree. If, if you just give a phone call and say that once the weather dries out, you only need a couple, you know, Yeah, I'll weeks be sure and tell him that you met with the family members. And... I don't believe one was mailed to me, so. We didn't meet last week except for end of the month meeting, so we just opened that. It was dated, I think, the 16th. Yeah, that's what it said. You can take those if you like, so you've got the phone number and stuff. Okay. Don probably needs to keep them, though. No, that's fine. Right. I mean, a you know, if you want to That's fine. You guys can keep them. Do you, ha do you have a county cell phone? No. Okay. I'm just going to email you these pictures then, and before you go on, if I might just share with you, there have been some concerns on 120th, um, and I know you, someone had already talked about it a couple weeks ago, but basically, you got some holes developing alongside the road. That one goes out to where there's a culvert end broken off. Okay. And, I mean, this is not the first time. I mean, there's I think there's a problem with the shaping there. This is a hole right into the field. Can you kind of see where that goes in? You can look at them closely in the email, but basically some sinkholes, if you want to call them that, 
are developing on the edges. I think there's not um, in certain on certain parts of that road, especially there's not a good crown, and I don't know what needs done. Maybe some rock on some of those, of course, maybe the one especially with the culvert, but there's some shaping issues, I think, on that stretch. I'll try to get something more formal put together for you. Um, I think the thing that we need to know is which pits have been enacted this year that we have not pulled any gravel out of because I think we uh, were kind of in agreement that we would yes. pay the difference of that commercial the, uh, tax. The right. only active pit that we did not haul out of this year was Keeler. And we're just at the very end of finishing up that pit, but we do have some piled there yet. Um, there are a few that we did not get a lot hauled out of. We tried to get some here a couple weeks ago and it's just too wet. And didn't lay down at all. And it's just going to be a problem all through the winter for sure. But uh, yeah, the Shaw gravel pit, we ended up getting 100 cubic yards out of that, and Simmons 80. And everybody else had pretty substantial amounts, I'd say. Yeah, if you get something put together there, because like I just said, I think we need to compensate a little bit. I also about doing that when the contracts was it March when they all come due? Yes. I think that's when otherwise we'll have to do another agreement with, agreement with them. Yeah. I think they They're all on March 31st. Regardless of the I believe, yeah, 31st. What did you say, Don? I said I think that the new contract said it, they first if you increase the price of the I would have to review it again. I think it might have. I think so. If the, if the contract was changed throughout the year mm -hmm. or before their termination date, but yeah. We do have some that go more than one year. still a constant issue with us. Uh, the, the quality and the volume has definitely changed over the years. Uh, I will let you know that we did haul um, looks like 4,350 tons of uh, quartzite one inch redstone. I think that would equate to around just shy of $45,000. So. Uh, it, it's an option. I don't know. You said it did come out to about forty-five thousand. I believe it's just shy of forty-five thousand dollars. And that comes out of the gravel line item in your budget. Yes. So I know that constantly searching for options and locations for gravel and see if we can try to find some better product and try to save us as much money as we can. If not, I guess we'll just have to resort to more rock, I guess. And then last meeting, we had discussed the purchase of those trucks, uh, purchasing three and eliminating five others and you guys wanted to see what some expenses on those trucks were 
And between those five trucks, we ran a queue on the last three years of expenses, and we had $144,820 worth of expenses on those five trucks. And uh, uh, one of the plow trucks was a little over $16,000. Other plow truck was a little over ten thousand. Uh, the newest ninety-three Mack truck was nineteen thousand uh, dollars. Both of the other trucks, there's an eighty-nine that we spent a little over fifty-two thousand on, and then the nineteen ninety we spent forty-seven thousand on. So, How much of that is routine maintenance? Um, I don't have that exactly broke out of there. That was total expense on it. Uh, of course, the plow trucks are going to have very little. I think they probably get serviced once, maybe twice a year. Now the gravel trucks that are running, yeah, they're going to have a little bit more miles and stuff put on. So, yes, there is some routine maintenance that is included. And that was 144,820, three years of maintenance for five trucks. What was the price of the new trucks that you were proposing, the total? Um, it looked like around 160. Times three. Three, correct. And those are coming with the warranties. Yes, sir. And plows and spreaders, you know, it's just not a bare truck. It, it would, uh, well, and then I'd also like to know what the what that maintenance projection would be per year. I mean, the maintenance costs is, are any of these going to be have to taken out of out of house for service? Mm -hmm. I would hope not. Um, well, they're under warranty and everything outside of the service. The, there shouldn't be any expenses on them. All three of those are going to be spreader. They're going to. They can use a spreader, yes. or snow plows, or plow, or snow track. Yes. Have you looked at any older models than brand new? I have not yet. <coughs> I have not had time. <coughs> that might be something worth doing. <coughs> Is that the government discount? With that, with that government discount? Yeah. And, and like I said, I've only checked at one place at the moment. And that was. Uh, mainly so I could get a chance to go down and look at one. Ellsworth County just recently purchased one. I just have not had time to make it down there to look, so. Um, I do know that right now we are operating on one plow truck, which limits us greatly to get over when it does snow. What's the difference between using the plow truck for snow versus using the plow and the grader? Uh, the main two differences are, is with uh, motor graders you have uh, what I call set down pressure, and if you're not careful you can damage your highway a lot easier with a motor grader. And not only that, it takes the uh, motor grader away from being able to go out and get on their other roads, the gravel roads, quicker. And we do not have the ability to put salt and sand down with the motor grader either. And they're about 30 mile an hour difference probably plowing. Yeah. Can be. You know, it depends on Does the conditions. Does each grader have a plow or are they sharing one between the route? No, each, each motor grader has a plow. And, you know, if, and the plow only has to be utilized typically when there's drifting. If it's a six inch snow that lays flat, you know, the the mold board under the motor grader will be able to take care of that snow, no problem. So are you only using the plow trucks on the highway, on the Yes, highway? they only get used on blacktops. I believe so who's operating the, the it or truck them? drivers. Not one specific one does plowing? Or if you only have one truck running? Yeah, yeah, one specific person typically runs that truck. It's kind of been assigned to them since the beginning, so we usually send them out with two people in it be able to run a spotter because you are traveling at a speed a little bit quicker than 10, 15 mile an hour. That's all I have for you guys this week. We've got a... Where did they go? Over there. Us.
assume you want to pass those out from K work on some certifications oh, for yes. forklift training and defensive driving. Yes. That would be perfect. Excellent. Those five trucks, do they all have it? Does anyone have significant value? I guess maybe I should ask it that. Um, what do you call significant? Well, I mean somebody that would probably want to, to buy them. the one. I, I'm sure it's not running now. I'm sure it doesn't have much value. And it's probably got some prob major problems. Most of those had major problems, haven't they? I looked through everything. There's been something major that's been replaced on about everything. You know, some of them had an engine, some have had transmissions, some have had the rear ends gone through. You know, it's just a... I, I hate to use the term, but, you know, they come to a point where they're ticking time bomb. I mean, I've worked here for, what, 18, 17 years now, and we had those trucks when I started here, and, you know, they were Ellis County's trade-ins. So, I mean, we've got a lot of good use out of them. I mean, they've more than paid for themselves. I guess you think the five have a value of at least one new one. I hate to throw myself under the bus, but I don't think not not quite that much. You know, and if we could work it out, I I would love to. If we did do the trade, be able to save the uh, was it the ninety five Mac and convert it back into a tractor, so we'd have an additional tractor to pull the low boy with and whatnot when the other ones are hauling gravel. Uh, we used to have an additional truck at one point and we have since sold and never replaced it. But As for the spots on uh, 120th Road, um, I, I know there's a couple issues there that need taken care of. We tried to get those done when we did the CDBG grant for the projects further on south, and they would not allow us to include them in that project. But they will be, to get fixed properly, they will be some sizable projects that I think we'll have to look at potentially some alternative funding or another CDBG style funding for. For the sinkholes that um, I just showed you? Or? Well, I didn't get a good look at those. I don't know where those locations were exactly, but I know uh, well, first two cuts south of the first road there, south of Vesper. There is a uh, already I read this week that there is going to be some money appropriated for rural infrastructure um, you know I, that it was not a large amount of money but there was some money there that uh, since that is a major north-south route in the county uh, might uh, I don't know whether Tanner or Kirk and Michael was aware of that what that program is coming up but that might be a place that we could find some funding I mean, we have been very successful at uh, doing that once in a while on some major problems, the Beverly Barnard Road. That problem yes. was solved. We just happened to be ready. It was an RO project. Yes. So, you know, I think, uh, I, I guess I would say that we need to look long term at that road, not patch. I think it needs to be a long term Good. process where it is well done. Yes. Um. Even if you can't get to it right away, would you at least put a sign up so people don't run off the road? My mom is 91. She drove that road, and I swear that woman was white as a sheet when she got home. She said, if I'd have missed some, if I would have met somebody, I would have got over. I'd have been down all in the morning. And there's two places there. I'll have to do some thinking to even know what I could sign it with. I mean, if you could put one of those white. Flag things oh, or something so that people know. Just so they know that it's that there gone. is holes there. 
that it is that that's dangerous when you don't know they're there. Right. Extremely dangerous. Well, and I, you probably can see it. They're not small. I mean, no. they're they're in, into the roadway, the, the concave part. You know, and I know that uh, funding options will vary because that is a federal aided road. So. What are you looking for funding for? The materials to buy some rock for base? What? It's mainly going to be materials and equipment, and labor, everything. You know, reconstruction. That it basically will be reconstruction because right now the slopes are straight up and down. That's the way it was designed in the 20s, 30s, whenever it was built. And we need to do like we did further south and bring in thousands of cubic yards of dirt and put it on a three to one, four to one slope. Uh, you're dealing with right of way, fence, all of that to be able to get it back to the way that we build roads now, you know, and what's the standard practice today. You know, when it was built and designed back then, that was standard. So, so who do we have that can design that project out and give us an overview of it? On cost? Both, st strategically and cost. Tanner could do all that for us. I guess we need to be real careful too because with the amount of moisture we've had this fall, that ground's going to start moving. That's in those areas that's what happens is that ground starts moving when we have all this rain. We have slides. Slopes. Like they do in California, except ours don't go quite as far. Well, some of the problem too is where you don't have the proper shaping on top of the road you get that ledge and you get into the sod that holds the water along the side of the road and then you get that any kind of motion from the water drain off into a particular area because it's kind of been sitting alongside the road and then all drains in one low spot then you really get uh, erosion so without a crown and without getting rid of those ledges on the sides you're not going to solve the, the problem ever I mean, that's got to be, I don't know if that's a training issue. I don't know if it's a, an individual route issue. I see it certain places more than others. Um, I would think that would be up to your department to address that in a specific way. got their machines ready for the, the next day. There was a few um, that I gave permission to take their graders home with them. That way they would ensure that they would be able to get to work and in the process they were able to open roads. Yeah, we had a complete on blockage road. on our road yeah. and there was, yep, yes. they, came, they came out and at least got that cleared off. And there are several miles of dirt roads right now that we could not get opened. You know, they were no way to open it. Right. It well, was, then, yeah, didn't freeze bad. underneath, and it's mm -hmm. just uncommon weather for us right now. Yep. With a, what looks to be a trend for the season. Yeah, it's so. 14 inches of snow already, I believe they said. Yeah. That's for sure. So. Alrighty. Well, you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. All right, thank you, Michael. Jennifer? Yep. I have some information that I need to share, and I need an executive session for trying to have privilege dealing with Lincoln Park Manor. Our nursing home, 15 minutes to be in. moved. I'll second.
concussion all over the Thursday, all right? Aye. Aye. I have a college visit with my son in the afternoon. Uh, I need to leave. So the motion days have been stacked, it seems like. I'm usually there all morning. So if we came in earlier and did it earlier, like... So I guess really, I, I need to get Mr. Hay on the phone. I can come in earlier. Okay. And my question is then you don't have a scheduled meeting with anyone at the state no. at this point? No. I uh, double checked uh, last week and sent an okay. email um, letting him know that there was just a couple days and I just couldn't move like the 10 things that were on um, and he hadn't heard back yet. So I'll double check again with him. But no. I tried to make myself available. But I just want to let you guys know that stuff. So let me Thank get you. let me get to cracking on the stuff that we talked about. Let's see what we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Don? No. Um, I think we need to Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve both fall on a Monday. Um, we usually close at noon on New Year's Eve, don't we? Didn't we do this the other day? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you weren't here. Oh. Yeah. Well, did we do new? I think we just did Christmas. Well, you guys did Christmas. New, normally, the courthouse closes to the public at noon on Christmas Eve. I think that there's some confusion though about some of the departments because Katie um, had sent out an email to the. I didn't get it, but to the departments that said that you guys granted four hours and if anybody needed wanted off, that they could use the other four hours. So one department specifically asked what if every employee would like to use their leave time to account for the other day, for the other four hours and be closed on Monday. Could they be closed on Monday? And I told them technically with you guys only granting four hours of holiday time, I felt like you were saying that we needed to be open till noon or four hours of our department's time. Am I incorrect in that mannerism? I think that's up to the department head. If they can close their department, that's one thing. I, the other if, departments if can't. part of the please. county's open, the whole county has to be open, in my opinion. All departments have to be on board. I don't think that we can let... But that would be like, I mean, if Tammy's her own entity, elected official, if she takes her own lead time to just not come in that day, and she knows she's getting four hours because that was granted, I don't think we have any say over that. It's, she has, yeah, she, yeah, she has somebody to cover for her. I mean, someone will cover for her. She's, she's an elected employee. She doesn't have leave time anymore. Yeah. Um, the question came from the highway department. They had every employee said that they wanted to be off except for one. And so the question is, is are they, should they be open? Should they not be open? Do they tell the one, I'm sorry, but you have to, you have to be cover off this. if everybody else says yeah. that they don't want to work? Or do they make the one employee come in and, and run the department, which is basically sitting there for four hours? I, I told them that I felt like they'd be open. I mean, I thought that's kind of what would be was decided was that the courthouse would be open until noon. So. I think the intent was to work half a day when we made that motion. That's what our department usually does. Work half a day. Work half a day, and then I usually stay. Well, and ultimately, in the afternoon. yeah, you can't make it fair across the board because the sheriff's office isn't going to close and EMS isn't going to close, so it's not going to be equal for everyone. And if you're an and elected you official, use that time to move. Well, some, some, the departments, decent. some departments start earlier, so probably the highway department, if they start at 7, then their end time is going to be at 11. So, that's what I thought it was. But if there's anything different, let me know. But the courthouse will well, be Well, where's closed. the specific question coming from, the department? Well, when now Joe mentioned, what are they going to do, I just... Thought, I, I told the department head that they needed to be open half day, whether it's one employee that runs it or all um, of them. Yeah, um, let them so decide. So. The, depart yeah. the department head can decide. That's, I mean, so I guess, is that, a, is that okay for me to say that? No, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it, it may be just that they're there to answer the phone. Yeah. But if there is a major problem, I mean, well, they'll have to call out. people in. Yeah, yeah, they'll have to call people in. I mean, if we have a snowstorm, they're going to have to come in. That's all there is to it. On Sunday, but I, I think that if we've decided, if you've decided to, and I'm not against a half a day, I think every department is open a half a day. We only did Christmas. Do we need to do 
Uh, New Year's Eve, we close to the public at noon, but we're still here after noon. So it's not that like you're okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So you don't need any kind of motion for that. You're just going to close the courthouse off. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We'll adjourn until Monday. Thank you.